Now, Riemann was smart, and he was not just smart, he was a mathematician. Now, mathematicians, I've talked about this, right, are different, are very, very different from, say, physicists, okay? Now, physicists and engineers, to an extent, they'd say, look, if you try to measure something, just get accurate, and just get accurate enough to do the job, to build the bridge, to make the car go, whatever, okay? Like, if you can get, you know, a thousand decimal places, who cares? Like, I only need the first 20, for instance, okay? Um, so, a physicist or an engineer might be happy with this. You can put in maybe not 9, maybe say 90, and that would be sufficient. But a mathematician is not satisfied with such, you know, you know adequate precision. They want something to be exact, okay? So how would you turn something that's approximate, like this, into something that's exact? You make M infinity. Yeah, you get more rectangles, right? Um, so instead of having something really broad and um, not detailed, like this, okay. What you do is consider what happens as n gets bigger, right? Or if you like, what happens as w gets smaller, okay? And you can see it happening, right? <laughs> it's so funny, you know, me and my reputation, I could have done this on a screen, but I just like having paper in front of me. Um, as you get more rectangles, and as the rectangles get smaller, at some point, you won't be able to tell the difference between a bunch of rectangles, and the actual area that you're trying to get, which is with all its curves and you know, those kind of things. Okay. Now, question. At what point do they become indistinguishable? Okay. When there are infinity rectangles of zero width? And the answer is <laughs> al almost. <laughs> so close. Uh, we do want an infinite number of rectangles. Okay, But if they're of zero width, then I know what the oh, area of is. zero width. It'd be, yeah, that's right. So it can't be zero. It just has to be really, really close to zero. Okay? Or they'll still have a now, tiny gap. Yeah. This, is, this is interesting, okay? What I want is an infinite number of infinitesimally small rectangles. Now, think, stop. We've done this before. Okay? It wasn't with rectangles, though. It was with triangles. When do we have triangles? They were infinitesimally small. Does anyone remember? Wait, can we think? Can we think? Can we have three yeah, seconds? Five seconds, seconds, 20 seconds. Okay. Oh, yeah. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> hmm. Now, keep in mind, I've only been teaching you guys for you know nine, ten months, so it's it's within the time that I've been teaching you. Wow. When did we think about a triangle that was useful to us, but the triangle, if it was big, was not useful to us? We wanted it to be really, really small. Were we feeding the to the bacteria? <laughs> Ah, so yes, yes. Is this like Yes and no. You're, you're a couple of steps ahead of me, actually. Um, it was when, it, this squeeze law is involved. Um, it was when we were trying to work out gradients, right? We said, look, this curvy thing, it's gradient changing all the time. That's kind of frustrating to me, okay? Ooh. I can approximate it because the gradient will be close to rise over, sorry, that's, that's wrong. Rise over run. But what I really want is a triangle that is, you know, infinitesimally small. Put that triangle in there, okay? Now at this point, because it was no longer just a conventional horizontal length and a conventional vertical length, we had to give them special names. Okay? Do you remember what we called them? We called them, we called rise dy, right? And the d stood for what? Difference. It stood for change, right? Because delta, that's the... the um, like even in science, we use that to signify a little, little change. Okay. We call this one dx. Okay, so just a little change in y, a little change in x. Okay, so what I have here is the same kind of scenario, right? So an appropriate name, I should say an apt name, an apt name for this little width would be dx. Just small, horizontal. That's what I'm going to call it. Okay. So Riemann said, look, this thing here. Okay. I can do better than approximations. I can say the area will actually be equal to that if, if I do this business, right? Make that thing really small, okay? So what I'll say is, we, we said it two different ways. I'll write it both ways. I can either say I want a whole bunch of rectangles, lots and lots and lots of them. So I can take the limit as n approaches infinity. N's how many rectangles we chose, right? How many I'm going to add up here for um, Of this sigma thing. Or I can say it's the limit as the width goes to zero. OK? 
Okay, now importantly, it doesn't get there. It never gets there. It can't, because otherwise the area will be zero, right? Um, but it has to get really, really close. So it's, it's the same idea, because one implies the other. Okay, now he was like, look, uh, I've got a problem here, right? Because this sigma notation, right, it's really about adding up integer things. And I'm not talking about integers anymore, really, okay? So he needed a new way to talk about this big, long sum, of, it's an infinite sum, right? Um, but this sigma notation had already been taken, right? So he said, hmm, the only other language that he was happy to, to write in was, you know, just German script is the same as uh, English, right? Except with more, you know, accents in that. So he said, look, I still want a sum. I still want a sum. So I could use a letter S for sum, but everyone, you people use S for, what's S used for? Displacement, I think, right? Uh, or distance. So he's like, that's out. So I can't use S. So I'll just make it a long S, okay? It's still the same idea, okay? But it's a sum of the same thing. Now, it changes a little bit, okay? Um, this, this part here sort of has all of that built into it, okay? Now, he wanted to add up the same kinds of things, right? So he's going to have not just f of x k though, right? Because the k starts to become less meaningful because you've just got an infinite number of them. So who cares what number it is, okay? I just want all of them, right? So he just said, look, it's, it's the function, okay? And that's the, that's the height that I'm talking about as the height changes as I go move along. And then the height has to be multiplied by the width. Now we already decided what to call the width, right? Because that's what we already decided from differentiation, right? So he said, look, height, width. That's what area is. Does that make sense? So you see how this comes from the definition, okay? Um, the definition of area, I mean, which is this rectangle, okay? Now I need one more thing. Um, when, we, when we wrote this sum for the first time, he said, I'm gonna go from one to n. Because sigma notation requires, like, well, where are you starting from and where are you gonna end, okay? Um, you can't, I mean, it's kind of meaningless to say the entire area because that would just be, you know, infinity or something like that, okay? So he said, look, where are you going to start? Where are you going to finish? He'd abandoned the idea of having a, having a K in here, which was his counter to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay. What was really useful to him is, well, you just start somewhere and you end somewhere, wherever you want to, okay? So he'd say, well, let's call that A and call that B. Go from A to B, okay? So instead of saying 1 to N, which is adding up in sequence, okay? He said, well, look, let's go from A to B, right? And this is just wherever you start. Uh, he called it your lower bound, right? This is wherever you end, your upper bound, okay? So this is what he described. Now, he didn't know what it was equal to, okay? He said, um, this is what it must be. It's built off this idea, okay? But it's different because this is just counting along, and, and these things are, uh, there's an infinite number of infinitesimally small things, so it's, it's categorically different. But you can see the continuity, right? You can see that this sigma turns into um, this, this elongated s. This one and this n turn into the a and the b. Um, this is still the height, right? Height, that's okay. And this is still the width, okay? Right, now, I'm gonna pause there for a second and make sure that the right part of my story. <laughs> uh, I had to write this out for myself to make sure I got Thank you. Okay, now I'm going to have to rub some stuff off. Mm. I'm going to leave those guys there. <laughs> now, um, Riemann, right? Um, he called this first thing, this thing here, um, he called it a Riemann sum. Very, very egotistical of him, okay? He was the first guy to try and approach the problem in this way, right? But he said, look, this is a sum of a whole bunch of different things, but this I feel is different. This is exact. It's no longer just the approximate part, okay? And what he's the process of, of bringing together all of these things is really about taking one whole thing and chopping it up, like, you know, so it's, it's indivisible, okay? So he said, look, this is not just taking a sum anymore. What I'm doing is I'm really trying to combine, or another word for that is, is integrate a whole bunch of little things into a whole, okay? So he said, I'm, I'm not going to call this a Riemann sum anymore. He called it the Riemann... Integration. Well, integration is a process, and this is a, this is a noun. Inter this is an object. So he said, look, I'm going to call this no, an really. integral, right? Um, and the process by which I get there is called integration, okay? Now here's, here's the important thing you need to get. The problem he was trying to solve was area, right? And he didn't know 
how it was actually going to pan out in terms of like the maths of it. Okay. Now the problem for us is that the maths of it is really nuts. Okay. It's called the fundamental theorem of calculus. Okay. Uh, I could prove it to you. There are textbooks that are, if you go to Cambridge, it's got a proof of it. Okay. But what I'm going to try and do for you instead of develop a rigorous thing which would just put you to sleep is I'm going to try and walk you through the intuition. I think you know enough um, from, from this idea, basically, to be able to understand, okay, what on earth does this have to do, area, have to do with gradient, which is something we, that's where we got this idea from. 